Okay, so here is outcome two, part three. So we're looking at circuits, and there's two kinds of circuits, series circuits and parallel circuits. Now, a series circuit can have only one current path. All the charge travels through each component of the circuit at the same uh, rate. If one device is turned off, they all turned off. So here you can see there's your uh, power source, and there is three resistors, and there is the electrons going through. And so uh, in, in this case, the voltage splits between uh, the three resistors, but the current is the same everywhere in the circuit. So in a series circuit, as you add more bulbs, they all are the same brightness. And they, if you add more bulbs, they all become dim. Okay, And the current will be everywhere the same. In a parallel circuit, though, they have several pathways. The total current, the current in this case splits, but the voltage is the same. So if you add more light bulbs in this case, they're all going to stay bright as long as there's enough energy from the power source going through. But the current will be different. So the current, so here's one pathway. Here's another pathway. There's a third pathway. You can see over here, there's only one set of current going through, but in this case, there's double the current because the electricity that's going here splits and some of it half goes here, half goes there. And over here, it's the highest, right? You can see that this splits off here and then another one splits off there and there. And then when they come back, they gather again. And so uh, in this case, advantage is everything stays bright. If one burns out, the other light bulbs stay on. Okay, in this case, uh, as you add more light bulbs, if one burns out, the other ones, all of them go out. But this one, as you add more bulbs, they become more dimmer. So in this case, the battery lasts longer. Uh, and in this case, the battery doesn't last as long, but all the lights stay bright. In case you don't know how to set up a parallel circuit, it's essentially jump-starting the, the bulbs from another. So here is your parallel circuit, right? And one switch to turn everything off, an ammeter to measure current, three light bulbs in here, two cell battery. Uh, in real life, it would look like this. So there is your two cell battery, there's your ammeter, there's your switch, okay? And there it is, your first light bulb, just like this. And then the second light bulb jump starts off the first one, and then the third light bulb, bulb jump starts off the other one. And we will do that in the lab. And there's some worksheets on that. And then household wiring. In order to install or modify wiring in your house, it's necessary to get a permit from your local government. After completing the work, the inspector is going to come in and check to make sure that it meets all the criteria. Some important things you need to see in here. There's a ground, so it looks like an upside down Christmas tree. There's your circuit breaker so that it prevents too much electricity from flowing. And there, look, you can see your three outlets all in parallel. That makes sense. If you did not make your your outlets in parallel, if you made them in series, as you turn one device on, the next one on, next one on, the power to each one would be reduced. But by setting it up in parallel, the power stays the same. But then we also need a circuit breaker so that if there's too much electricity flowing, the circuit can break open. In digital devices like your computers, your your uh, your cell phones, you have the same four basic parts. You have the conductors, but these wires are thinner. Okay, uh, you have, and of course they're, they're usually shorter. Uh, you have loads that are resistors, lamps, and motors. Switches, there's transistors, there's millions of switches inside computer devices, right? Not just one to turn on and turn off. It's all got binary language, zeros and ones. Uh, and the source of electricity could be a 120 volt electricity outlet or it could be a battery of different voltages. And the switches has only two states, right? On or off, zeros or ones. This is known as binary code or machine code, right? If you've ever seen machine code, uh, you've seen it's a whole bunch of series of zeros and ones. These are the electronic switches in modern de digital devices. They're called transistors, okay? And then there's also an integrated circuit. There's also microprocessors uh, in them as well, but uh, you're not required to know much more than that for the exam. However, you should know that in electronic devices, the, the voltage tends to be smaller, the current tends to be smaller as well, the wires are thinner, and the resistors 
resistors are actually fairly sm relatively small compared to like an uh, like an oven. Home electric safety. Okay, so the doesn't take a large amount of current to do some serious damage. It's not really the voltage; it's more the current. Uh, and here's a list of currents that can cause injury or possibly death if you become part of the circuits. You never want to become part of the circuit or where it's easier for electricity to flow you, through you than it is to flow around the circuit. Uh, this is a, a real problem with anything that generates heat, right? Because it draws so much current. But if they, if there's a pathway from you to bypass the resistor in, let's say, your, st your stove or in a toaster, it will. And of course, uh, it's devastating effects. Household safety, you don't overload plugs by plugging in too many devices. Never work on or clean appliances that are still plugged in. You can get a very bad shock. Replace any frayed or worn out electrical cords because they could give you a, cause a short circuit, causing a fire or giving you a shock. Use receptacle covers on easily accessible outlets, especially if you have small kids or like I learned uh, where for, for our puppy, we're making sure uh, they can't uh, get easy access to that. Never use appliances near a sink, bathtub, or with wet hands, because you could get a lethal shock from that. For outdoor safety, uh, all electrical outlets outside should be GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter breakers. Uh, what these do is, if you're about, it, it monitors the uh, the voltage. If there's a drop in voltage, it immediately drops uh, drops off. You've probably seen these. They have a little red and black button on, on them. Usually they're in your bathroom. They're outside a, as well. Uh, one of your uh, one of your outlets outside would have GFCI on it. Okay, and so if it recognizes the voltage is dropping, that really means you're about to be electrocuted. It tr breaks the circuit. Never allow your body or something you're holding to come near or contact the overhead wires, right? Not only just, it's not a question of not touching it. Don't get very close because we know that electricity can jump. Uh, don't use two-prong electric cords outdoors. If you have a three-prong electric cord and you don't have the right extension, don't cut the uh, extra ground off that's there to protect you. Do not operate electric devices while it's raining outside. Even though it's GFCI, I, I, do not, I would not trust my life to that. Before digging, make sure that there's no underground cables. So they tend to put more electricity cables underground. In the past, they used to go up on transformers and then go into your house. Nowadays, they go into that green box, the transformer that's somewhere on your block, and then the wires go underground. So you don't want to be digging any holes unless you actually know where those are. Household wiring, practical wiring means that your house is wired up in parallel and the voltage across each device is the same. So that means you turn on one device, it does not draw electricity from the other ones and make them dim. And once again, there's your circuit breaker, there's your ground. Uh, problem with this is if you turn on, plug in too many things, the wires could get too hot and cause a fire. That's why you have fuses or circuit breakers to protect the household circuits. So if they break open, you have to unplug a few things, turn a few things off, and turn it back, plug it up, and turn and reset it. Otherwise, uh, the same problem is going to happen. Uh, even good conductors have some resist resistance. Now, how do you get the lowest resistance? Big, thick wires would have lower resistance, right? and uh, uh, shorter wires would have lower resistance and cooler wires would have lower resistance. And so uh, here are the things, length of the wire, cross-sectional area, temperature, what material, of course, copper has less resistance as well. So you'd wanna make your wires out of that. And that is the end of outcome number two video notes.